Kalimera, Kalispero, whatever time you are watching another edition of This Is Mapa. We're back with a Conference League qualifying preview, a game between Thassos team. I'm not going to say their name. I don't want to. Uh, I'm joking. Up well against yeah, yeah. Serbian side Vojvodina. See, I can do it with a with a very nice. I can't do it Barry Vo- Barry um, Barry White style. White. But I'll try, I'll try. Yeah. Barry White. Yes. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. There. You know, Laurent Blanc. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just asking my questions in French from now on. Man. That's how I'm going to roll it. Anyway, we have a Serbian football expert. This gentleman, I'm sure you recognize before joining me on No Chofters in the past to talk about Marko Shepovic. It is Alexa Vujic. I, I whispered it because of the machine that's behind me. Bro, how you doing, man? Well, I'm doing speak. wonderful. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's it's always great to be here. Uh, first of all, I'm glad that the podcast is doing so well. Uh, I've kept up somewhat with what you guys have been doing, and it's been quality. And uh, last time I was here, I brought you some good luck with uh, which Chepa. So uh, maybe this time I can I can bring you specifically some luck because I know how much you dislike the other guy's team. So yeah. uh, no. <laughs> you know. Wait, wait. Which which one which one are you saying that to? <laughs> uh, that, I, I can't say. That's that's a mystery. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, that's it. Yeah, play play both listen, sides. I'm good, gonna good. be honest, right? As much as I don't like Thassos team. For the for the for Cyprus and for Cypriot football and this podcast, it would be beneficial for them to do okay. As much as I don't want them to, I will celebrate if they do go out. But at the same time, if they do go to a certain place, it'll be good for us, and we might get featured in other World Soccer Magazine ep- uh, editions, no. like we were quite recently. I'm gonna plug the shit out of it because people you doubted should. us. People <laughs> doubted us, bro. They doubted us. They said, this is never going to work. Cypriot football ain't going to work for you guys. Well, World Soccer Magazine thought otherwise. So my nuts are on the table. Look at the size of them. Anyway, so let, let, let's let's go into something else. Let's talk about this uh, Vojvodina. We don't know anything about them, to be honest. So can you shed some lights on this club? And thassel has got loads of questions. So I'm going to leave it with him after this one. Yeah. Well, uh, Vojvodina is, uh, I think, one of, one of, if not the oldest team uh, that was uh, in Serbia. They were, you know, the two big teams, which were Red Star and Partizan, were founded in 1945. Vojvodina was founded back in 1914, so they've been around for a long, long time. Uh, it's a club that is recognized as the third biggest club in Serbia, I would say. Uh, it's a club that has given a lot of very talented players for a long, long time, you know, going all the way back to the 80s with uh, Milo Šestić and Sinjša Mihajlović. Uh, when they won the the Yugoslav League title back in 1989, they've given a lot of uh, very talented players uh, in recent years. Most specifically, Dušan Tadić and Sergej Milinkovic Savić, as uh, two of our most important and technically best players in the in the national team, and guys like Milan Gacinović and Gojko Kacha and many other guys. Uh, it's a club that has a has a, a very passionate fan base that you know depends with the the amount of people that show up. It's it, you know Novi Sad isn't a big town, but uh, when it's a big European game, they show up and uh, they support the team. Uh, it's a club that uh, has tried to get into uh, European football for a long time. The last time that they were somewhat relevant was back in 1999 for the old Intertoto Cup, which is an extinct competition now. Uh, they got to the final and they lost to, to Werder Bremen. And uh, they've been trying to get into the Europa League for a long time. And they've gotten to the playoffs several times. And uh, they've had some big wins in the meantime, but they've never been able to get through. And uh, now they're going to have an opportunity because the Serbian league is developed to a top 10 league in the rankings. Whether it is a top 10 league is up for debate. I would say it's it's not. We, we benefited from a couple of things, uh, most notably the Russian teams being disqualified. So that opens up an extra space for teams to, to, um, to develop. And um, I think that... Uh, it's a good opportunity for Vojvodina. I have a soft spot for them. I'm a partisan fan, but um, you know, I, I have friends that live in Novi Sad, and uh, I think it's it's good for the, the Serbian football that uh, a third or fourth team gets in. Like you said, with uh, with Upwell uh, winning, it's you know now it's going to be an interesting game, and I've actually been looking forward to it because uh, now that Serbia has five teams in the in the European uh, you know competitions. Uh, every win means more, but in the numbers, it means less because now the coefficient is divided by five. So uh, you cannot just depend on Zvezda and Partizan to carry you uh, the whole time, and especially because Partizan is now in the in the in the qualifiers. We were finished fourth, 
And the Red Star is in the in the group stage of the Champions League, and they're going to have a very tough time to, you know, to, to try and even get third place, let alone get out of the group. And the other teams that have developed into the second and third spot, like Bačko Topol and Čukarički, they have good teams, but they've not played in any group stage football. And now, you know, Bačko Topola has guaranteed Europa League, maybe the Champions League, we'll see. They're going to be in qualifiers, and Čukarički has the, the Conference League. So it's important that all the other clubs besides Partizan and Red Star do well. And uh, Vojvodin is one of those teams. They've. Uh, it, this is a team that is not, I would say, on the quality of some of the teams that they've had in the past. Because I, I think, let's say, maybe ten, even six, seven years ago, they had some very good teams, and they had uh, they had uh, good managers that were leading them. They had some big wins against uh, Bursaspor in Turkey. They beat Sampdoria four 0 uh, They beat Honved. You know, they played well against Sheriff and uh, Pils, and so they've had some good performances. But the issue with them is they've not been able to keep most of one generation together let alone for five six years they always have to they have to live off of something and selling the young players is what they they thrive on and uh, most of the youngsters they stay for two years they try to do something and if they don't they sell most of the team and then they start again and it's a you know basically a circle that they haven't been able to get out of they haven't had the investment they used to have in the past uh they had some controversial businessmen that were leading them that were giving them a lot of money but uh, they were never able to break through and uh, now they don't even have that, so it kind of uh, it's a, it's a situation that isn't great for for them in terms of the way that it you know they used to be because the Utah has some very talented teams you know they had you know Tadic was on the team and Milinkovic Savic was there and they also had other guys like Ivanic and Ozegovic and other guys that were there at the same time but they could just never keep them together they always had to sell them and they always had to leave so uh, it's going to be interesting but I'm looking forward to it because if other Serbian clubs do well then. Partizan directly benefits. So, uh, and I would like to see Vojvodina do something because Novi Sad is a nice town and they deserve uh, to have some good football and they've given a lot back. So, it's going to be interesting. I think uh, my personal opinion before I leave it to, to Tassos and to, to you is that uh, Upwell, coefficient wise, I think might be the best team in the, in the second round or one of the best teams that was there. But if you compare it to some of the other teams, it's actually somewhat of an easier matchup. You know, Apple doesn't maybe have the quality of some of the teams in the qualifiers that maybe have 15, 16, 18 coefficient points that are starting a little earlier. And uh, if Vojvodina manages to go through, then they are pretty much have a good path to get to the group stage because they're going to be the seeded team the whole way through. So... Uh, it's it's gonna be interesting. It's an early it's an early test for them because uh, it's it's July, so you know it's it's weird for teams to get ready uh, when you have to hit your peak form in the summer. Most teams wait for you know the winter, November, January, February to hit good form. But it's gonna be interesting. I think uh, the first game is in Cyprus, if I'm not mistaken. So it's uh, it's gonna be uh, interesting. The Serbian teams don't have a great record against Cyprus teams, but. Uh, I think that it's a it's a match that's not going to be completely uh, out of uh, Apple is not the complete favorite here. They're obviously the favorites. They have more experience. They have more talent. But uh, I think it's the Vojvodina has their opportunities. They just have to know how to 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 use them. So that's kind of a broad overview of uh, of the situation. They finished fourth last year. They were in the the fight for the the Champions League second spot till the very last moment. But uh, a couple of results here and there didn't go their way. They had some injuries. They had made some mistakes, and they ultimately finished fifth. So. Uh, you know, but uh, even at fifth place, I mean, they can they can still cause a threat. So it's going to be interesting. Okay, so um, with 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 that threat, then who who do you think is the man to keep an eye on uh, when the two fa- the two teams face each other? Well, it, it uh, it's going to be interesting because they had um, I would say one of their best players was the forward who just left. So uh, he would have been a, a big threat. It was Nemanja Nikolic who was supposed to go to Cyprus. It didn't happen. He went to Partizan. Uh, they had a, a very good midfielder whose name is Mirko Topic. who was a big, strong midfielder who can really. I think the best comparison would be something like maybe Zeka from from Copenhagen. Was a guy who's good on the ball. He's physically strong. He can move and run. He was sold. So like I said, the best players they've you know they basically. They can't keep them for more than two or three years because they need mm. to have some way to survive. But uh, I would say that the thing that the Voivodin has always had, they've always had talented wingers. They've always had talented forward players that can that can create. Um, the one name that's going to be most noticeable is uh, Veljko Simic, who used to play for Red Star Belgrade and uh, played for the national team a couple of times. Is a very talented uh, youngster. Nikola Trumic, who used to play for Olympiakos, uh, is a guy that played very well last year and he was on the radar for a lot of teams. Uh, in Serbia, they have a very talented youngster named Doros Kabic who can play 
pretty much anywhere in the midfield three if we're going with a 4-2-3-1. He can play wide. He can play as an attacking midfielder. He can play as an, as an eight almost as a progressive center midfielder. Uh, they've signed some other good players. They signed uh, a couple good center forwards. They signed a guy named Stefan Vukic who was there for uh, probably the best forward for Bačka Topola, the team that finished second uh, last year in the Serbian league and a team that's actually had consistent investing from the Hungarian government. So they've they've been able to maintain the team and they've been you know progressing very well. Uh, the defense is uh, is I would say a defense that's made of m- many players that can do many different things. Uh, they have guys like Mamadou Traore and Orosvitas who have been around uh, the block. They've you know they've played in, Ara- in Saudi Arabia. They've played around Europe. Um, you know, so they have a very talented young goalkeeper uh, whose name is Elaza Charovic, who used to be in Barcelona's academy. Who's, uh, you know, they were able to re-sign him, so it was important that they kept him because he's a young goalkeeper, and it's hard to find talented young goalkeepers. So uh, that's the thing that can help. And they have some experience as well, and guys like Dan Zukic and, uh, you know, Urush Nikolic and other guys that uh, the ages vary, but they've been around the league. You know, they've been around the Serbian league. They know what they have to do. Uh, they play very well with each other. They always have technically talented players. It's the physicality that they sometimes struggle with, but they can always pass the ball. They can always move well. So I would say that those are the players to to keep an eye on. And if you had to focus, you would probably focus on the attacking midfielders and the wingers as the guys that can really... That's, uh, that's that the worrying really thing. The wingers is the worrying thing because the thing that Abuel haven't done so far is invest in their fullbacks. At the moment, we've got two... We've got two left backs, uh, and uh, one is Hefte, who they've just signed from Cruzeiro in the 19s, uh, and the other one is David Jamas, who's also 19 years old and has very few appearances for the first team. And at right back, we're a bit stronger in the right back position because we've got Susic, but I've seen uh, I've seen Zapinto prefer to use Chebac, which has got me very worried. Uh, Stel knows what I think about uh, about him as a defender. Uh, so when you say wing players are kind of the, the strong suit, it's, it's got me like I was already a little bit vo- worried because uh, you know the Voivodina Vo- Vo- seemed to be the uh, one of the stronger teams that Abuel could have faced uh, yeah. in, in this in this round. Uh, so to say that, watch out for them wingers is 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 quite worrying. So um, I mean, we talked about their st- strong points, obviously. Uh, so what do you think is a position that uh, they need to work a bit better on? Well, if they had to choose something, I would say the defender specifically, even though they, they play a system that you could argue is probably based on the defending in the low block and trying to find counterattacking situations. They don't have a lot of very talented guys in that department. The guys that I mentioned before, Vitas and Traore, are experienced, but uh, they're guys that have bounced around from place to place. And if they had some top quality, you would argue some other team would have would have maybe kept them. They have they lack pace on the fullback positions, I would say, even though they have guys that... Uh, Again, they know how to position themselves, but in a one-on-one situation, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't count on them keeping uh, the upper wingers out of uh, out of getting into the box. It's funny because if you look at the transfer market values, which I'm looking at right now, uh, Voivodina has the more expensive team. So it, you can argue who's the favorite, who's the outsider. But uh, you're right about the the draw itself. Voivodina was very close to being seeded. They were, I think, one or two positions below the seeded place, and. Um, you know, I think that uh, it, it's it's not a game that's going to be easy. I think that one of the things that uh, teams have to adjust, especially, is the is the weather conditions in Cyprus. They can be brutal in the summer, and uh, Serbian clubs have a very poor record of going there. Partizan lost to Apoel many many years ago. And, I was there. Uh, you know, yeah, I, I, I wish that didn't happen. And then Zvezda lost to actually Zvezda drew with Apoel, and then they lost. No, to sorry, a couple years it, ago. it was Zvezda. Was that? Yeah, just, that was, I remember just Brusa scored the. Uh, scored the, the goal in the draw and they had an English referee and I started to chant of re fat bastard. So <laughs> and then they ended up they ended up winning the return leg. Like it was away goal. But uh, yeah. yeah you know so it was and then it, a couple other times, you know, we had the uh, Partizan played against Larnaca last year and then you know we lost. So uh the weather, you know, the humidity and the weather can be very tough there and Apple's got a good crowd, you know, regardless, you know, they can get people involved and you know that they always the stadium so um i would say that the defensive midfield is probably the place where they're going to be the weakest because they don't have a lot of experience there if they would have kept this guy that i talked about topic i think that you know they would have been able to kind of really maintain some stability but he was very important for them he was important for them going forward as well 
uh, getting those second balls, maybe like a Frank Lampard would, where the ball goes into the box, it comes on the edge of the box, and either he takes a shot or he passes it on the wing, and then they create something else. No. Now that they don't have that, uh, and they haven't been active, they haven't very been active in the transfer window as far as getting guys in. They've been trying to keep the team that they have, but it's been hard for them to find talent because the other teams are strengthening. You know, Red Star obviously is strengthening tremendously. Even Partizan is trying to sign guys that, uh, that are necessary. Tsitsim and uh, Chukarički as well are, are finding guys. So I would say that defensive midfield is an issue. Probably that spine of the team, uh, you, you can argue, is a problem. The center forwards they have are talented, but they haven't, you know, played uh there you know the guy that they signed is, is, a, is i would say he's a good player but he's coming into a new club and you never know how he's going to how he's going to adjust uh and the wingers that they have that are experienced don't have the pace to really cause any issues so they have to they're probably going to have to do something like that to use the wide players in the midfield positions to make up the numbers because they have guys like Malbosic and other players that have played you know in europa league and they've played in the conference league but uh, they, they're not used to playing those positions usually. So you're always, you know, it's like putting a square peg in a round hole. You have to try to find a way for them to fit. And uh, I would say that the stability is going to be very important for them. They, they're going to try to counteract that probably by sitting back and defending in numbers. If we cannot defend one-on-one, -on -one, then we're going to put six behind the ball. And if we get a counterattacking opportunity, we're going to try and use it. But, uh, you know, even when you, if you don't know how to position yourself, you can defend with 10 guys. You're still going to be, you know, you're not going to be solid at the back. So uh, I would say that those are the positions that are an issue. I have not watched up well, I have to be honest. So I, I don't know what the issues. I know that uh, you guys have Tomane, who used to play for uh, for Red Star. I know that he's there. I know a couple other guys that are there. But um, I think it's also yeah. interesting. Sapinto was the manager, I think, many years ago. And Vojvodina knocked one of his teams out. I don't remember what it was. But I know that they beat them like 3-0 or something. So maybe Sapinto is the lucky charm that... Uh, that's going to be useful. He used to be in Serbia many years ago, of course, as a Zvezda manager, and uh, he didn't do too well there. And foreign managers usually don't stay very long in Serbia anyway. So, um, you know, it's it's going to be... Uh, he didn't leave a great impression on me. I was happy that he was there because we won the title when he was the, <laughs> the Red Star manager. So I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that he's here, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, he's uh, he's a guy who's been around. You know, he's he's changed five, six different countries, and uh, you yeah. know, he's leading a club that's got some uh, some pull behind them. And uh, I think it's you know, it's, this, the Cyprus football isn't in the development it was maybe ten years ago when it wasn't just Apoel; it was other teams that were doing good. But now that you have Aris and Apollon and other teams that actually are making serious, you know, strides. It's not good that Apple is the fifth place team because if you were to oh. pick the, the first team that people would think of when they think of Cyprus would probably be Apple L. You know, I'm not, yeah. not saying that they're the best, but you know, they've been the dominant team in the last 15 years, you know, the Champions League and everything else. So when they're the fifth place team, it's it's not a good thing for you. But um I think the thing that can help Voivodina is that the big games they they usually play well, the, the best they can. They had a game a couple of years ago against uh, Standard Liège, and uh, they lost, but they played well. They got the game into extra time. That was in the year that uh, there was only one leg of qualifying because it was the COVID year, so yeah, they didn't yeah, have yeah. the second leg. And they played okay. You know, they even took the lead, but then they conceded in the second half, and they conceded in extra time. But the big games, they usually play well. So, I mean, if you can knock a club like Apoel out, that's going to give you confidence. And uh, I think the first leg is going to be crucial. If they can find a way to... Uh, to get something out of it, I think they have a chance. And the one last thing that I'll I'll finish on before I leave it to you is that Voivodina's successes in the past have happened in the away legs. You know, when they knocked out Sampdoria, they beat them 4-0 on the you know, away. They didn't beat them at home 4-0. They beat them in Stadio Olimpico. When they beat Bursa Sport, they beat them 3-0 in Turkey. When they played against uh, Sheriff, I think they drew on the road. And I think that they... Uh, uh I think it was Rapid or Vienna or someone else that they also beat when they were playing away. So the away games is actually where it helps, which makes sense because you're defending naturally, you're going to be in a counterattack, which is something that suits them. You know, you're not going to be defending at home unless it's a team that's much, much better than you. So this is not a surprise that they're doing well in the away games. And uh, I think that this is this is their opportunity. If they can just hold on and not concede in the first maybe 20, 30 minutes, you know, who knows? It's it, it can be interesting for them, but they have to keep the solidity, they have to keep the shape, and they have to not make calamities at the back. You know, Voivodin is a team that's always tried to play attacking football, which can lead to mistakes passing out from the back and trying to take players on in your own half. And a team is up well that has experience, they're going to take the ball and they're going to have a counter-attacking opportunity. So they have to be careful with that. Uh, Serbian teams aren't known for their great defending as a team. We have great individual defensive players, but we don't defend well usually as a unit. So uh, they have to be careful with that and they have to they have to take advantage. And they have to be physically ready, like I said, because the heat can be a problem, the humidity can be a problem. And uh, 
you know, like it's it's hard to be in the defensive shape for 75, 80, 90 minutes. And uh, it's it's hard also for Serbian teams because you're in the Serbian league. And if you're third or fourth, you have to attack the teams that are below you. So you have to have an attacking mindset. But when you go to Europe, you have to defend because the teams are better than you. So you basically have to have two different teams in one squad setup. And that's almost impossible for that's hard for Manchester City to do. That's hard for, you know, Borussia Dortmund or someone else to do, let alone for a small team. So, you know, you have you're sacrificing something, you're gambling something to have a style of play that works. And uh you know, it's it's hard for teams to to keep that up. It's hard for everything because they're a team that would like to attack, but they cannot attack the way that they would like to because the other team is going to take advantage of them. Sure, they might score one or two, and then they concede five. And you know, what good did you do? So, uh, the, the chance for Opel definitely is to put pressure, and I would say to uh, to use the the physicality and the fact they're playing in their own conditions and the. Uh, the fact that they can that they can make the defenders you know make a mistake, but uh, if they get too cocky or if they get too far forward, I think Vojvodina has the opportunity to punish them. So it's it's a scenario we've seen a million times in football, and it's just what manager prepares better and gets their team more ready to play. Yep, no, I I I, I agree with I, I agree with all of that. What I will say is just to, just to inform you is a couple of things. One, and we've lost him right on time. Have I gone? You're back I, again. I'm, I'm oh. back again. Okay. All right. So, so um, yeah, a couple of uh, a couple of things to mention on on Abuel's side for uh, for your information is one, their preseason Abuel are doing it in Bulgaria, so <laughs> it's going to be there's going to be a uh, there's going to be a situation where both sets of players I think are going to have to acclimatize to the match, which is going to be strange. Uh, and the second thing is that uh, there's a lot of pressure on the team to qualify to the group stages for this competition because the chair, the president, Petridis, has come out many times to say uh, over the um, over the last season that's happened and also just uh, in the summer now that if Apoel do not make the group stages in, in Europe, then there's going to be big financial problems. So you, you guys haven't been in Europe for two, three years. You've been getting to the playoffs or something, and then you just you couldn't get through. Exactly, exactly. And over the uh, over the last five or six years, the finances of the club are based on right. We're going to get into Europe. We're going to get into the group stages. So they spent they've spent their money based on getting that income in, and they haven't. So at the moment, the club is something like thirty eight, thirty nine million euros in debt. Which, for you know, if you look at Premier League teams or whatever, that's that's a drop in the ocean. Yeah. But in you know, in, in the Cyprus League, that's that's the, that's huge. It's massive. we have the identical situation with Partizan, which is thirty six million or thirty five or something like that. And when you're getting money just from UEFA competitions, you have you don't have marketing, you don't have players that you can keep. We have the academy, which keeps us up somewhat because we have a good academy. But, you know, you're 35, 36 million in debt. If you're not getting into Europe, you're not getting a consistent five, six million from the group stages because conference league is two and a half. And then every point you get is like a million or 500,000. And then if you're not getting that money, especially if you're not getting in consistently, like we we miss out one year and it's a problem. You guys haven't been there for what, two or three years? So yeah, it's, exactly. You know, exactly. It's a, it's a big, it's a big, big, big problem. Uh, and uh, obviously... Decisions have gone into to such a way in the past, which have led to the situation that the club is in now. Now, obviously, I want my club to do well. I want that my club to do well. However, if it comes to the point where Pedridis, the, the president, goes, well, I've got to give this to somebody else, that's not a negative either. But I'd rather they get they, they get through obviously the they yeah. get through the first test of Voivodina and then everything else that ha- all the other tests that happen afterwards. So there's quite a lot riding just on on these games themselves for for Abuel as uh, as as for like the future of the club. So the players are going to it's going to be very fiery because obviously the uh the fans know that that's the case as well so i mean we've spoken about kind of the uh, what the crowds like in in Lefkosia. i would suspect that 
uh, it will be the same. It will be the same when the away game happens as well, because I know for a fact that there's a big, uh, a big support that kind of travels with the team whenever they go out to Europe. Yeah, definitely. so, uh, so another question from my end, really, just talking about fan support and and and, and the like. Are Voivodina as a team expecting many fans to travel to Cyprus to see the team? I would I would think not. I would I would presume not because they haven't had a big result in a long time. I mean the Sampdoria game was what 2015, so that was eight years ago. I mean they've been trying to get in ever since and yeah. it's always been second round, third round, they've been getting knocked out, they've been getting knocked out by teams from like, you know, and it's not Liechtenstein, they've been getting out knocked out by some teams that they really shouldn't be losing. You know, they lost to Ruzan Berak, who was a who's a Slovakian team, you know, a long time. They weren't in Europe for a couple of years, you know, they just recently had a resurgence, they were finishing sixth or seventh in the Serbian league. So it's hard for them, and I wouldn't be surprised if if, if Apoel maybe has more away fans than Vojvodina has home fans in the second leg. I don't think that's going to happen, but if, let's say, Apoel wins 3-0, you know, who's going to show up because they're not expecting anything? So I, I don't think Vojvodina is going to have a lot of uh, a lot of support. Uh, you know, the country is divided in a way where, you know, Red Star and Partizan take up 90% of the fan base. Even in Novi Sad, it's, it's very much split down the middle. And uh, the problem with Voivodin is that they cannot keep a team that can stay there for two, three years. If they were finishing consistently second, third, fourth, third, you know, you, if you could keep a team for a little bit longer, then you would have something to identify with. But when every other season you're always getting someone new in and you have financial issues with the club, wages sometimes aren't paid, it's hard for you to manifest a consistent base of fans to support you. And uh, I don't expect many Voivodin fans to go there. Also, not, people from Novi Sad are lovely people, but they're they're not the most active people. And I don't think they want to go to Cyprus on 35, 40 degree weather for a match that they might get slaughtered in. So they're going to say, no, we're going to stay home. If they do something, we'll show up. If not, then, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. So, but, uh, so everything is riding on that first game for both teams. Then? I would I would say pretty much most of it rides on the first game. I mean, just, just judging from the history and just judging from the way things work, I would say that that's probably how it goes. With the, with the exception that Voivodina hasn't had a, a big home win in a long time. Like I said, all the wins that they've had have been, been away. And even the Sampdoria game, which I keep using as a reference point, because that was the last time they really had a ground swell. It was, the it was the first time in a while where the whole country was like, oh, look what these guys are doing. Look at Partizan and Zvezda. Zvezda is getting knocked out by Kairat. Partizan is losing to Bate Borisov. Look at these guys. Look how they're playing. They're playing great. And even when they had that, they lost the home like 2-0 to, uh, to Sampdoria. So, they, you know, they haven't had a big win in front of their home crowd in a long, long time. Uh, if the stadium was full, it was a great atmosphere, but they didn't have the result that you would expect. So uh, I would still say that Upwell riding the whole way is the favorite. But uh, I think that if if, if Voivodin gets something in the first leg, they're going to fight and, and claw like crazy to, to get something out of it. And a lot depends on the preparation period. A lot depends on who they sign. I, I would feel more comfortable with, you know, picking them if they were more active in the transfer window. But all the other teams that are in European competition have been more active. So it's it's kind of hard. Uh, I would say maybe if, if they would have kept some of their players, it would be a bit, bit of a different story. But now it's kind of, you know, Apple is the favorite going into this and we have to accept it as such. But uh, it's interesting what you brought up with uh, with the fans and everything. You know, I, I have this experience as a, as a partisan fan and cheering for your team to lose. Uh, if you think it can it no. cannot get any worse, it, I, you know, I, nothing cheer to lose. But yeah. you know, you're, you're saying if they lose, it's not, you know, the end of the world and someone new comes in. Trust me, someone worse can always come in. That's just uh, that, that, that's also so, true. That that is also true. Because no, like we, I must we, admit. When we were when we were knocked out, you know, in the Europa League many years ago by Augsburg in a very traumatic way. It's like, well, finally they're all gonna leave because we were like fifth in the league or something. It's like, oh, they're gonna leave and it's gonna be fine. And someone worse came in. So it it was like Looking back at it, we probably should have tried to support the team to win. You know, I under, it's, it's not an easy position to be in, but I'm saying always, that I understand. Always support the team. Yeah, the, that's the, that's the whole thing. Always support the team. Uh, it's don't always support the chairman, the president. That's the that's the thing. Uh, but yeah, uh, no, I completely I completely agree with everything you said. Um, what I would like to say is, I hope I, hopefully the best team will win. And uh, the best team, obviously, being up well, they will win. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I need some backup on this because uh, I'm 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 neutral at best on this, so I can't uh, you know, I, I can't really stick my neck up. But no, I, I think it. Uh, I, I think it just depends on how they, how they prepare and and how Voivodina goes about it. And uh, 
if if this was the third or or qualifying round or the playoff, I would I would feel more comfortable. But because it's the second round already, and they're probably having tired legs because the season ends late, you have to start preparation early. You don't even have time for a proper rest. You know, you, you don't even really have time to to go to the preparation period. So it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. I would I would say that Voivodina's key is to just hold on in the first half. You know. Keep it a game until then, and the more that Apple doesn't score, I think the more frustrated they're going to get. And then maybe Voivodina has a chance to do something on the counterattack or something, you know, different that they can do. And um, I think that if they can just the start of the game is crucial, and if they can they can have a good start, then they have a chance. If Apple scores early or if they have the dominance, then I think Apple is going to have a should have a fairly easy time. Again, it's football; you don't know what's going to happen, but mm-hmm. I have to be honest in how things work here. So no, I, that's, I, that's what I would yeah. say. Yep, I, I I expect I expect that Zapinto is going to line up the team to try and score early, but all uh, but as well to keep them as calm as possible to uh, to make sure that they don't get that frustration that we're talking about here. Because, because there's yeah, a lot of pressure. Not even now. If you look at the later rounds, like if you look at the unseeded teams in the third and the fourth in the playoff round, it's you know you have Osasuna and you know Aston Villa might be there and other teams. It's you know it's it's not an easy gambit to go through the qualifiers. So it's you know yeah I, I know. yeah. I mean you you mentioned Aston Villa. <laughs> I think that's my team in England. So, oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, I'm kind of, I'm watching it being like this. Like, get get a separate team. Get a separate team. Get a separate team. That way I can be on all the podcasts. Get, get, get a gain on everybody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so um, it looks like fearless leader has dropped off. Um, yeah, unfortunately. So, so uh, I'm guessing he doesn't have any more. Uh, I'm guessing he wouldn't have any more questions to ask. So uh, I think if you have any, least... I can answer them. It's not a problem. But <laughs> well, I mean, we, I, we, we've gone we've gone on for thirty minutes. We don't want to be taking up any more of your time. It's ten past eleven where you are. It's ten past eleven where I am. Look, it's, yeah. it's dark out. We should go to bed. I think. <laughs> but uh, I'd like to thank you very much for your time. Thank Thanks you. for explaining to us uh, about Voivodina. Uh, do you want Do you want to plug anything while while we have you? Do you want no, to tell people I, I where to follow I you? I, I wouldn't say so. If you want to to follow me on uh, on Twitter, it's at mad underscore Maxavelli. Uh, most of the tweets are in Serbian, but they can be in English sometimes. Uh, there might be some projects coming up, uh, you know, you know, I'll, I'll have a way to plug them. But uh, for now, I'm, I'm fine with just talking about uh, about Serbian clubs whenever I can and I, or when I get the chance. It's it's kind of always humbling to be called an expert because I don't consider myself an expert on anything, but I try my best. So uh, all I can say is that for people to keep watching the, the podcast, uh, the this podcast, because it's good quality and uh, it's, it's it's good production value and the stuff oh, that you hear is good very quality. Much. So. Uh, it's, it's really good. I, I, I really, it's not even just because, you know, me and Stella, you know, I'd say mates and all that, but the, the quality of the podcast is always good. So it's, it's, it's when, it's when the internet watching. works, when the, <laughs> when internet, the works. internet works, exactly. Yeah, I know. We, we, we were just signing uh, off. So, yeah, <laughs> no, that, that, so, uh, I, I was praying, I was praying that stream, stream yard was still recording because my internet went down, it rebooted itself and I thought, shit. Is it going to completely fuck up everything that we've we've done, like recorded? But it, it says it's still recording. <laughs> yeah, it's still recording. So yeah, sorry about that. No, it's okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, <clears throat> that's a, that's a plus for Streamyard because other other sites, when the host yeah. drops off, it, you know the thing goes. But now you know it's still recording, so it's it's good. Yeah, but, it, it uh, can make it, it can make the uh, it, it can it can make the end of season. Blooper reel. Oh, of course, <laughs> exactly. of course, of course. Actually, I've got a question. I don't know if you've asked it, Thasso, about Sapinto. Did you ask about Sapinto? I, I, I did ask something. But, uh, I mean, okay. you, you can ask the question. You can ask the question. It's, it, it's fine. And, and, and then, and then we can re-edit the sign off. You'll have to read it. No, no, it's, it's fine. I mean, I, I'm just going to leave it like it is for comedy. <laughs> Fuck yeah. You know? Smart man. I, might, might as well. <laughs> People are going to be watching. So why not? Why not? I mean, the thing is, he he comes with a bit of a volatile reputation we saw how he uh, i don't know walked at his previous club but he loves the club and and whatever the, the circumstances how did it end with red star and also knowing that red star have a relationship with Abuel, do you think that made his decision to join up easier well it did it didn't really end great that was the season he came in middle of the season uh, trying to save things. Uh, he was the first 
foreign manager to be in the club, I think in like, what, seven, six, seven years before that. Walter Zenga was the last one back in 2005. And uh, foreigners usually don't last. I mean, we had Lothar Mateus and Avram Grant. And besides that, it's, you yeah. know, it's been pretty much uh, pretty much all domestic people. I mean, those are good names with different results. Lothar was really good. Avram Grant was terrible. So uh, it, it was interesting. He came in at a, at a time that was kind of... That was a team that I think started off that season well. Uh, Prosinecki was the manager, if, if you know who I'm talking about. He was managing, at this, as of course, a club legend who was there. And uh, they they started well, and they had a mm-hmm. very traumatic playoff loss in the Europa League. They almost made it in, and they in the last minute they failed. And that was a team that had some talented players in the roster. And Partizan at that time was kind of in a in a switch. We two years before we were just in the Champions League, but a lot of the money went to waste, and we were kind of changing managers, starting again with the youngsters. And, and you know, he came in. And uh, that was not a good time for for Zvezda. They had this sort of surge that was working with Prosinecki as a club legend, and then when he got, when he left, it was like, okay, what are we going to do now? And uh, some people came in at a time when they were six, seven points behind on the table, and he 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 made it interesting in a way because uh, the the last derby of the season, if uh, Red Star would have won that, they would have still been in the title hunt. But we scored the goal in the last minute and uh, ended their dreams basically. And uh, it's hard for, you know, actually, he wasn't the, the first one, I, I lie. Zdenek Zeman, who used to manage, uh, I think, Krotone and a couple other very known managers, he was in Zvezda for, I think, a little bit. And he was actually the manager when Apoel knocked them out. I think that was, what, 2008, if I remember, when Apoel knocked the Red Star out. So he was the manager at the time, and then he got sacked right after that. So uh, foreigners don't get that kind of leeway. Or, and they don't understand the pressure that comes from you have to win every game. You have to. You cannot afford to drop points because if you do, it's a disaster. And uh, you know, Sapinto leaving, I think, was expected. And uh, you know, they 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 tried to reboot. Finally enough, Red Star won the title the year after that. But uh, it was also a time of, of turmoil in the club. They had just had the whole board left, and this was a whole huge political takeover that was you know was very heavily politically influenced. And it's like, okay, we're not going to have foreigners come in that are, don't have the quality. Then we're going to bring something new in and. Uh, so he left and uh, he didn't leave a great impression. You know, he, he tried to do some things and, and his temperament is good for the Balkan countries, but uh, he didn't have time to do much because he was there only for like five, six months, if I remember. So going to Apoel, I think, is, is you know, something that he that he looks at as a big club, because if you look at the other managers, the other teams that he's managed, if you take away, you know, after Braga, it's 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 kind of been a drop off. He hasn't had a club of that size and of that stature, you know, to manage. So I think he looks at it as a challenge. I think that he he wants to go to a club where he has that pressure. I think as all Portuguese and Brazilian and, you know, not South American, but you say Spanish and Portuguese people, they have a temperament and they love the challenge. They love the pressure that comes and they want to to bring it on themselves sometimes. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does. And uh, it's not an easy situation because like Tasso said, if, you know, if, if you're that much in debt, you haven't played in Europe in three years. The Conference League playoffs and the qualifying is a tough ask because there are some very good teams that you can go up against even if you are up well. So, again, it's hard to, for him to have. Also, Apple finishing fifth is probably not acceptable. You know, you can maybe finish second or third, but, you know, finishing that low is... Or what if it's they, fifth or sixth? I don't remember. But No, no, no. The Apple finished second. Ah, my, sorry, my bad. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. No, let's get that right. Apple finished second. Um, but, yeah, the... Their performance dropped off in the playoffs quite a lot, which is yeah, why the playoffs, they didn't yeah, it's, it's a different system. Sorry, I was, no. it, was, it was my fault. So uh, it's a lot of pressure on him, but um, it's you know it's going to be interesting to see how he responds to it. I think he he wants that. I don't know how smart that can be sometimes because you have to have the tactical chops to back it up. Um, you know, we'll see. You know, if 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 he can flourish under the pressure, then I think he can do a big thing. And if not, then. It's a fourth year without European football, if I'm not mistaken, which is a lot for any team. And uh, he might be getting the boot. And, uh, you know, it's 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 not a great situation to be in, but it doesn't look like he likes great situations. So, uh, But speaking of the Red Star thing and the Apoel thing, I think, you know, you, you work in the, in the Balkan region, you kind of get a sense of how things work. It's not much different from Cyprus to Serbia to Croatia to Bulgaria. You know, there's differences in quality and financial structure and leagues here and there, but it's similar region. You know, similar issues in terms of, you know, foreign players coming in, European Union laws, all this stuff. So, it, you know, it, it once you've seen it, one, you've seen most of it. And uh, I think that he feels comfortable here. And um, 
hopefully this time he loses, but because uh, we get benefits from it. But uh, you know, no, I, I think it would be good for him to to get through this round. If he gets if he gets the team into the group stage, it's going to be a big benefit for him because he can say, "Listen, I fixed things after, or at least smoothed things out after a long time of things not working." So uh, mm-hmm. we'll see what happens. But, well, uh, to be fair, I think Milojevic was, uh, deserves a lot of praise for what he did to this club because don't get me wrong when he when he took over they weren't in a precarious situation on the field but I think he he came in he galvanized the squad mentally and unfortunately for them a yeah. lot of injuries occurred I, I remember they signed Ben from Red Star in January and he started yeah. okay okay but he didn't have the he scored that free kick I don't know I don't know if you've seen this Alexa but there's a free kick he scored it's just it just, uh, it, it, like top corner, top corner. Uh, bent, yeah. bent, bent it like Beckham. It was, it was a fantastic free kick. Yeah. And there was a then couple of other, yeah, there was a couple of other, other chances he created and a, a couple of other like really magnificent performances. And then, yeah, like, like Stel said, he did his, uh, he, he did his ACL and uh, it, we we haven't seen we, no, yeah. you know, he's, been, he's been injured. We haven't seen him since, and it's gotten to the, uh, he's at an age as well where an ACL. Hey, injury 33, 34, could, right? That's yeah, yeah. An ACL injury could end a career as well. But ho- no, hopefully we see him back. It's just it's not. It's going to be I think another good f- three, four, five months before we uh, we we see him again. I think. The, the thing is, what what interests me um, as. I'm going to use the word neutral loosely, um, is the incomings and outgoings at Abuel. We're used to seeing 10, 15 players come and go in the summer. But this summer, they've brought in seven, I think. And I think maybe six of them will probably be around the first team. But we haven't seen that many departures from the first team. And by that, I mean regulars. So Garo has gone. Um, Ferrari, the left back, has gone. We you know. could argue Dalsvili was in and around the first team at times. Wheeler's gone, but he had he, he did his knee, didn't he? In fact, he did, I think he did an ACL as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yep. So th- th- there's four players. I have to, I have to ask: Is uh, is Fet Fatsidi still any like? Is he bringing any quality, or is he just a name that you signed to? Yeah. So far, I mean, it, in the friendlies, where when he's played, he's been he's been good. Um, I personally think. That we got rid of a couple of promising youth players to get him in to take that position. There's a, a players like Diawara, who uh, who did really well last season. Last season at some of the smaller clubs in uh, in the league, uh, and he's been brought in, and uh, basically he's going to push those uh, younger players down the pecking order again. Yeah. He's also shorter than me, which I'm not really a fan of. If you're shorter than me as a footballer, it's not great because I'm a very small man. So, um, but again, uh, I would I would love him to prove me wrong. The good thing is, obviously, is a lot of the players that performed well last season have stayed as well. So you've got players like Sarfo, um, you've got uh, Kostadinov still there. You've got uh, Crespo. Uh, you know, we've got there's there's a, a good solid kind of base to build a team uh, to build a team on. So to see so few incomings isn't necessarily a, a big problem for me, especially since there's a lot of players that Abuel have had on loan to other teams that I think should get the step up as well as some of the other youth players that they've got like Sachas. Uh so so yeah I think uh, I, I think there's a good solid base of players now that can probably do a job for the season albeit with a couple more signings that I think a lot obviously a lot of clubs are waiting for as well as you know you kind of wait for uh, August to come when players start to get a bit more desperate if they don't have a contract yet, you're yeah. more likely to get those players in on a lower wage, say, or slightly fa- more favourable conditions for the club. Uh, and I think that's what they're waiting for. It's hard to assemble a team when you're waiting until August 31st to see what happens. It's you know because you have to, you, yeah. you know, you, you can't afford that. And Fethetzi is coming in. I would say, listen, if you've mentioned that the club is in the need of wins. 
Are you going to go with the youngsters or are you going to go with experienced players? And he's been around for a long he, time. He has, so. he has been around. I mean, uh, uh, somebody I discussed with uh, on Twitter said that, you know, he's played he's played for all these all these big clubs. And I agree, he has played for all these big clubs. Um, but we, 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 we seem to sign these players that are over the age of 30 with injury records because Fed Fatsidis as well, He's got the experience and everything else, but he also has an injury record. Yeah. Um, and then they get injured, and then we go, oh, my God, he got injured. What are we going to do now? There's what no what were you B. expecting, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There's no plan B for those injuries. And we saw that happen last season, towards the end of the season, when Ben got injured. Uh, plan B was like... Bleh. Look, throw a youngster out yeah. there let's figure was, something out yeah. get, get somebody else to yeah, they, they were basically trying to put a square peg in a circular hole uh, and uh they need they need that plan b and um, last season for for all the good stuff that the coach did he didn't have a plan b and that's yeah, why, that was, and that that's was why an issue. Had... ended up losing the uh, losing the, uh, the, lead, losing yeah. the lead. He had that. He had that with the with Zvezda at the end of his tenure because they started off good, and then once the defensive shape kind of started falling apart, it's like uh, it's kind of going worse and worse and worse, and we're it's... starting to do better in the derbies, and uh, you know that's exactly what happened to Abuel. It's like the strong defensive, really really strong defensive mindset, clean sheets, like the strongest defense in the league. Team like, was ready. They're running least 90 amount minutes, of goals. You know. Yeah, the least amount of goals conceded. And then all of a sudden, the team started coming onto the pitch. And within the first 10 minutes, we conceded two goals. Like, three or four games in a row that happened. So, yeah, it's exactly the same thing that happened at Abuel. Well, I would, I would, I would also say that, you know, if you look at the guys you're signing, you know, when you're signing those big names... I think part of it is, first of all, you have to try to attract other signings because if they see a guy like Ben or Crespo or someone that has experience and has a name, you know, they're going to be more willing to come in even if the other players are more talented. And also when you're signing those kind of big names, we, we're forgetting one important thing. It's like if they had the quality or if they didn't have the injury history, they probably wouldn't be available for teams like Apoel or even like, for example, a team like Partizan, like when we signed Vibras Nadho, who played for Ceska Moscow and Olympia Kos and all these teams, he's like, oh my God, he's great, but he, he can't have more stamina than 50 minutes. And I said, well, if he had the stamina for more than 50 minutes, we wouldn't have the opportunity to sign him. So it's you're always taking a gamble in these kind of situations and you have to try and hope that the academy players can fill those holes and that you can make financial developments out of that and then that you can you know you can develop players for your, your own use but you need a club that's stable to do that and when you're not playing in Europe for a long time you can't wait for two years for a player to develop it's not we need to get in now like we'll have time to develop later if we're not in Europe the development goes you know it, it doesn't matter so it's it's a yeah. lot of things that clubs from these regions have to think about and it's it's hard to, to run clubs from from the Balk you know from the Cyprus Greece Serbia Balkan Yugoslavia region it's it's not an easy thing to do. It's not easy to to have, you know, transfers coming in. You always have teams that are going to have op the op opportunity to offer more money. You're waiting until the last minute. You might have shady agent dealings like like we talked about. So it's it, it's not easy and you need to you just need to have consistency and you need to have you know, a positive attitude and you need to have I would say you always need to have a good academy. I don't know how Apple's academy is in that department but you always need at least two or three youngsters to, to fill the holes because it also and i think that leaves the fans up when they see a youngster that comes through and develops and the, they get behind the team more and it's easier to identify and it's easier to support the club when you have some sort of a structure but when you're just kind of all over the place then it's you know what are we going to do the next day and that's a lot of pressure to try and function so it's it's not easy it's not you're right it's not well it's it's certainly going to be an intriguing game and um you know this is uh, an exciting time of year i guess for both clubs at the end of the day you know it's the beginning of the season uh, it's a european game i'm sure we're going to have a lot to talk about when it comes to reviewing it thus <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we will and by the time that game starts there might be more um transfers to to come especially with a boil anyway because I'm pretty 15, sure gonna... 15 days is a lot of time. 15, yeah, exactly. 17 days is a lot of time. So. Exactly. I, I, I'm guessing they're going to bring in another centre back because, you know, with Garo gone, who else do they have as cover for? Tvali and, and Crespo, Karamanoli. Uh, no disrespect. I, I don't really think he's the guy that 
is going to be anyway. Whatever it is, what it is. Left I might back. be wrong. We need a left back. Oh, yeah. You we might need, need another back. central midfielder. You might need another central midfielder, from what I hear. But anyway, I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to go into that. But anyway, you're not supposed to be giving him tips, aren't you, the enemy? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm just, I just want to hurt his feelings a bit. Yeah, hurt, hurt my feelings. <laughs> Well, bro, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. And um, I'm, gl I'm glad your internet was better than mine. <laughs> thank you. So, thank you do, very do, much. Do, do you want to do your plugs again just so Stel can hear them as well? No, I, I, wouldn't, I, I don't think there's a need for the plugs. If, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the old part stays, then people can see it. And, uh, it's going to be and I apologize if I was there. talking over you guys, but I always have something to say. No, don't be silly, Sorry, man. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. The more the more information you have, the better. And we, we really appreciate it. So thank I you would say for one, one last thing. Uh, if, if I happen to... Sorry for interrupting. Yeah. I'll sign off. No, no, no. Uh, Go ahead. Hopefully Go. there will be some sort of a plan for a podcast regarding uh, Partizan in English. We'll see what happens with that. There's something in the works about that. So stay tuned. And I think it's going to be good. It's not just going to be for football. It's going to be also for basketball and other sports. So... Uh, that's some idea that I have, but it's still a long way in the making. Right now, let's just hope that my team makes it through the summer and qualifies, and then we'll, you know, and let me I have to get the season ticket first, and then we'll have <laughs> plans well, for later this, on. But, this yeah. is something that we can have a conversation about another time because I'm I'm interested to hear more about this because I've got some ideas already. So you know, it's uh, Good stuff. We, the gears keep on keep on working with me but again thank you bro for for joining us everyone watching thank you for tuning in apologies for my crap internet it's the curse of roy apologies so, for my apologies for my voice i know it's not easy no, to listen to sometimes they've had to put with my voice for the last three years bro don't worry about it so it's, it's, all, it's all good, good. it's all good like so and subscribe every... people the good quality on this podcast for sure thank you very much appreciate it appreciate it so there you go like subscribe uh, we're on Twitter. We're on Instagram at This Is Mappa. We've got more and more content to come. So thank you everyone for tuning in. Thaso is on Twitter at Flares Gafes and on Instagram. In fact, he's been more consistent with the transfer story. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, you know, uh, Elon's decided to put Twitter in the bin. So I've got to, I've got to reach out to people the other ways, haven't I? It's all right. We'll grow. We'll grow organically. That's it. Yeah, so there you go, boys and girls. We'll be back very, very soon. Adios.